restaurant. The restaurant was on Ivan Cole and Houston. Yeah. Uh, saw everything and then some. That song reminds us that God is everything and then some. Glad that he is my joy and sorrow. I'm glad that he is my hope for tomorrow. He is my rock and the weary land. Some of y'all ain't never been homeless. I've been homeless. So shelter in the time of storm. Then they said, God is. God is. If you didn't hear them, they said, God is. God is. They said it again. God is. God is. Then they said it one more time. God is. God is. My everything. And that's your territory right there. Because he has been all of that and more to us. Amen. Shall so come in the like manner 
as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Amen. Hear the believer. Shall we pray? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. And let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Yeah. That thou wilt draw me nearer, draw me nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thine precious leading. Side. To the end, O oh God, that you are glorified, Christ magnified, the church edified, O oh God. Father, so that we might be sanctified, Father, to go out into the world to tell people that they can be justified in Christ. Yes. Lord, move us beyond words and move us into action, Father, so that this message, Father, will not fall on bad soil, but fall on good soil and bring forth its fruit in due season. To the end, Father, someone might come running out like a Philippian jailer in his family. What must I do to be saved? Amen. Amen. I grew up, I would say, in an old school manner. When I say that, it means that I grew up in a way that is not often looked upon today as a way of rearing children. <coughs> But it's how I was reared. When I grew up, Saturday mornings, we had to get up, wash our face, go downstairs. My grandmother had made breakfast. We did not eat cereal. We ate real breakfast. Well, when after we finished eating breakfast, my grandmother would then tell us it's time to clean up. Every single Saturday that I was a child. Right. We had to wake up, the same routine, the same ritual, get up, eat breakfast, and clean the house. Right. That was interesting to me that that's how I grew up. I thought everybody grew up cleaning up on Saturday morning. Right. Oh, I found out that that was not true. When we cleaned up the house, we had to strip the beds and wash linen. We had to wash walls. We had to wash dishes. She even made me go outside and sweep in front of the house, in front of the house, sweeping the sidewalk. We had grown up differently. Growing up in my house, it was said that if you did not get up, you were lazy. If you did not get up, that means you were trying to dodge work. And I know Matthew in my house every Saturday morning gets angry with me because I, just like my grandmother, wakes him up every Saturday morning and he, alongside us, has to clean up the house. There is a work that we all must do in order to keep a house going. There's a work that we all must do in order to keep a church going. Well, Amen. There's a work for all the ministries that are here. There's a work for the pastor's aid. There's a work for the choir. They sing on Sunday. There's a work for the ushers. They usher on Sundays and at funerals. There's a work for the deacons. They look after uh, along amongst the people and see if there are any problems. There's a work in this church. We all have a job that we're called to do. Don't you remember when Paul writes in the first Corinthians chapter 13, that, I mean chapter 12, there are many gifts, but we are still what? One body. All of these gifts work together in order that we might be edified as the body of Christ that's here at New Sardis. It's somewhere in that scripture where he said, do not say if you are the nose, where is the sin? Do not say if you are the sin, where is the smell? Why? Because we're in here together. We all have a work to do, and in order to do the work, we all have to do what? Work together. It takes work while we were in COVID in order for our worship service to go on. It took work. It took somebody to get a, a streaming service like StreamYard. It took somebody learning how to work StreamYard. It took Angela to do the StreamYard. It took me to do uh, the call of worship. It took Miss uh, Alice Ruffin in order to do the announcement. We all work together. To Sister, Brad, uh, Sister Bradshaw to come in and play the music. It was a collective effort. Yeah. I want us to know today that if we are on one accord in Jesus, there's nothing that we can't do. Amen. Amen. Oftentimes we forget that we are called to be on one accord because we think it's about me and mine. It's not about me and mine. It's about we and our. We are a church. A 
church, the ecclesia, the called out body of God, the ones who are called to do something not in the walls of this church, but in the world where God has led us. Amen. We meet here to worship, we depart so that we might serve the world in the worship of what we've done in here. Amen. Our text today, we encounter Jesus leaving this earthly realm. And he is ascended to his father who is in heaven. Yeah. And as he leaves, he, he tells the people, ask him, when is Israel going to be redeemed? When is Israel going to be restored as it had once been under David? And what does Jesus tell them? He tells them, it's not for you to know, it's for God to know. Yeah. That's to tell us we have, he has a work for us to do. Don't worry about what God's going to do. You worry about what he told you to do. Then he tells them, and after this, you shall receive power, and what the Holy Ghost is going to come upon. And he is then ascended up into the heavens. Yeah. And there are these men standing there, looking around, mesmerized, looking up into the sky. They're not concerned about what's going on around them. They're not concerned about the issues that are plaguing the society. They are mesmerized about Jesus going up. I mean, who would not be mesmerized about your Lord and Savior being raised from the dead? Who would not be mesmerized by him ascending into heaven? This, this was the same Jesus who was able to heal bodies, the same Jesus that rose Lazarus from the dead, the same Jesus that took two fish and five bodies and and made a, a supermarket in the wilderness. I understand them being mesmerized. Right. Yeah. However, you cannot stand there just looking up. We've got to get to work. Amen. First thing I see in this text is getting to work, and I see that there is virtue in getting to work. There is virtue. Virtue really talks about our morals and our ethics, right? Amen. Virtue, virtue. There is virtue in getting to work. We have to have an understanding that this work that we're doing, we're not doing it on our own. We're not doing it by ourselves. We're doing it because God has led us into it. When we talk about virtue, we talk about how God has equipped us, how we have been sanctified for this work to do what he has told us to do. Right. Virtue, talking about morals and ethics. Don't you know that our morals and ethics are to guide everything that we're doing, not just in the church, but in our very own lives? Amen. Yeah. Well. It's the virtue, it's the God that's in us, as Mary Mary would say, it's the God in us that makes us not cuss somebody out when they cuss us out. Well, That's our virtue. It's our virtue when they give us too much money and change, and we say, you made them. Say, That's our virtue. That is why we say we must walk circumspectly in this world. Right. Why? So that we may not be condemned with who the world. We must walk circumspectly in this world. We must live in a way that is pleasing to our God. So often in churches, I'm not talking about this church, I'm talking about the church universe. So often in churches, we think that simply because we go into the house, that makes us safe. We pass up ministry, riding through ministry, to get to church to sit down. Don't we know that God has called us into a work and our virtue ought to push us to do something even on our way to the church house? This church, this building, this ecclesia, this tabernacle is here because there was people who had virtue, and virtue relies upon faith. Right. Don't you know it takes faith to please God? Yeah. Don't you know without faith it is impossible to please the Lord? Yeah. We must be a people who stand firm on faith. Why? Because we walk by faith and We are a people of faith. The justified shall live by faith. Faith. And then it's these men who were so consumed with Jesus going up, they did not have an understanding that there was the virtue of what he had put in you. It was the virtue that he had taught you. It was the Holy Spirit that came down as well within you that's going to equip you to stand and withstand what's going on in this world. Amen. Amen. And I want us to know today that it's the same for us. It's the virtue that's in us. It's the morals and ethics that's in us. It's the Holy Spirit that's in us that's going to help us do the work. Don't you know we cannot do this work by ourselves and on our own? Amen. It takes the Holy Spirit to help us do this work. We have a lofty goal as a pastor, David, as a church, to raise $35,000 for our pastor in 10 months. Don't you know in our own strength it will never happen? Never. Right. But if we connect our strength to our faith and connect our faith 
said to our God, ain't nothing he can keep from us. But he said, no good thing. Yeah. Well, he was told from them to walk upright. Amen. It takes virtue. And these men were concerned about Jesus going up instead of being concerned with the virtue that was within them, causing them to do something in this world. Second point that we're talking about, get to work is, there's not just virtue, there is vigilance. Vigilance. Vigilance literally means stay watchful. Mm -hmm. These men were not vigilant. No, they were looking up. And looking up has its place. But it's in Psalm 121, it says, For we look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which may happen in earth. He will not suffer our foot. Behold, he who keepeth his brow, neither slumber nor sleep. Yes, there is a place for looking up. But there is a point where we got to stop looking up and start what? Looking out. Amen. We got to start looking out. This work that we're called to do requires that we stay vigilant, which requires that we stay watchful. There's something in my neighborhood called next door. You might have the app on your phone. The next door app that tells you about all the happenings that's going on in your area. And I would really say it's really a way for people to be nosy. Because that's what they do. They get on next door and they get to tap and type about everything that goes on. But it's a neighborhood watch. There's a way for everybody to keep their eyes out on what's going on in the neighborhood. If you see something, say something. Remember that app thing? There is the same uh, applicable uh, uh, task for this here text. If you see something, say that we have to stay watchful and looking out for what's going on out around us. Amen. You read about or you've heard about anybody these days of the, the travesty that occurred in Uvalde, Texas. Amen. Killed all of those children, killed two, two teachers. They said that the door had been proper. They went back and said that that was not the case, but the, the point is this. If we are not vigilant, if we are not watchful, if we are not on our post, if we are not doing what God has told us to do, the enemy will come in. That's right. Don't you remember? It's in the book of 1 Samuel that David on the run from his father-in-law, his father-in-law saw that David yeah, finds himself in the cave. And in being in the cave, his enemy, his father-in-law, is in the front of the cave. Amen. You remember the story? You remember the story? And, 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 and the man that was with David said, Thy enemy has fallen into thy hands. Let us, I pray thee, go to kill him. David says no. no. David cuts off a little piece of his garment and takes his jar of water with him and he goes afar off and then he calls his name. Yeah. And he says, the first thing before he calls his name, he talks to the servant who was supposed to be watching after Saul. We all are called to be watchful in this thing called ministry. We all are called to do our task and do our job. And in doing it, we are going to protect not only ourselves, but each other. Amen. And David calls the man's name. And he says, behold, you were supposed to look after your servant. Look after thy Lord, brother. And he said, thou hast not done so. And he said, and it really requires you to be killed because you have not watched over God's anointing. Right. I want us to know today that we are called to be vigilant in this thing called ministry. But if we are not vigilant, here comes the enemy coming in amongst us and we are like sheep, sheep amongst wolves. Mm -hmm. These men were so busy looking up, they could not look around them. If we just open up our eyes and look around us, we will see ministry everywhere we go. Amen. Abandoned houses, that's a ministry. Children needing food, that's a ministry. Parents needing support, that's a ministry. We are called to be watchful so that we might do ministry. So oftentimes we want to close our eyes and bow our heads when it comes to prayer. But I'm reminded that Jesus says in Matthew 26, watch and pray. And pray. Mm -hmm. In order to pray, he says, one must be willing to watch as well. Mm -hmm. And when we are watching, that means we are discerning, that means we are out in the world doing what God has told us to do. That is us being vigilant, doing what God 
God has called us to do. Yeah. We are called to be visible. But lastly, 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 if we're going to get to work, we have to have bigger. Wow. Bigger is our strength. You know it takes strength to do this work that we're doing. Amen. It takes us to be strong and of a good courage. If we simply sit and do nothing, our strength will never come. It does not just take young people to do the work. It takes seniors as well. It does not just take seniors to do the work. It takes young people as well. So seniors don't we cast your eyes down on young people. Amen. And young people don't cast your eyes down on seniors. Amen. For it's when the seniors and the young people get together. Well. It's when we march hand in hand together. We're able to transform this church, this community, and this world. Amen. But it takes us to walk together in vigor and in strength. These men were looking up, so their strength had been diminished because they could not watch, and if you cannot watch, you cannot do work, and if you cannot do work, you cannot be strength. We must be of a good courage and have strength to go out into the world and tell them that we are called into this work about Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he tells them, stop looking up. Stop standing there looking up, but start getting to work. For this same Jesus that went up is the same Jesus who's going to do what? Come right back down. Amen. And if he comes down, don't you want him to find you with your work done? Don't you want him to find you having done what he has told you to do? Don't you want him to find us having been his life in this world? It takes us to have vigor. Without vigor, you all, we are just... Walking around as a dead, hopeless church. But when we have vigor, and our vigor is in him, somewhere I read in him we live, move, and have our being. If our vigor is in him, there's nothing that we cannot do. If we have vigor, and our vigor is connected to the true vine, and who is that vine? Jesus Christ. If we're connected to the true vine, how can we not be of the greatest church that God has called us to be? It takes us to have vigor. Amen. Jesus, and all that he is and all that he was, gave up the ghost one Friday, and he died, and he got up the third day, third day with all power in his hand. That took not only virtue that took not only business, but that took vigor, and in that vigor, he said, I will leave you a comforter, and that comforter will do what? Give you power. Yeah. We have power. Yeah. We have power, and that power is to transform not only our lives, but to transform the world, and to transform the church in which we sit in right now. It takes us to tap into the power, well. and that power gives us the authority to do all things. I want us to know that there's a work to do. Amen. We have a work to do, and whether our pastor is here or not, we need to get to work. Amen. 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 As we soon find out, even mortality will enter the ranks of the church, and when someone dies, that does not mean the work stops. That means the work must go on, which means we must continue to train people to do the work. And that work is rooted in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we say thank you for the work. Thank you, Lord. May we be empowered to do the work. May we be have the virtue, Lord, that is our Lord. May we have the vigilance, Lord, that is our watching. May we have the vigor, Lord, that is our strength. Yes, and may they connect. Father, in you, so that we might be the transforming, liberating power that you called us to be as the church. Father, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we say, we extend to you our hope in Jesus. We extend to you our hope that is in him. So that you might be transformed. You might not be working anywhere. You might not be working in any vineyard. But I want you to know that there is a work for you here. Yeah, yeah. There's a work amongst us. Look at us. We're tattered, ragged people. We are sinners by accident. Well, if you're looking for a perfect church, don't join this one because we're not perfect. Amen. But I tell you who we are. We are sinners striving daily yeah. to live out the call of God on our lives. Yeah. We are sinners striving to be 
disciples of Christ. We will help you and you can help us in this work. At the fire scene, trust and obey. We extend you a hope that Christian discipleship. Lord, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us falsely before his presence with exceptions. 